Crafty ways of escaping Bash and PowerShell this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. This is your weekly dose of Technolust, and you may have noticed that the place looks a little bit different. I'm coming to you from a brand new Hack 5 bunker in an undisclosed location above ground somewhere here in Oakland. And let me tell you, this video is going to be short and it's going to be fun and sweet and that there's still just so many things in motion. But I really wanted to quickly talk about um, one of my favorite characters, the escape character, and how it relates to Base64 encoding and PowerShell. Uh, so the thing about escaping is it's delightful, it's this thing, and if I were to just quote Wikipedia, I would say, an escape character is a character that invokes an alternative interpretation on subsequent characters in a character sequence. So like, for example, if you're in Bash and if you wanted to do, I don't know, Echo, Bob says hi, you'd notice that the quotes don't appear. And that's because Bash is actually trying to interpret those quotes and subsequently anything inside of them. So the same is true in PowerShell. If we wanted to echo, you know, Bob says hi, we're going to get totally different results because special characters are special. So to treat those special characters differently or interpret them as regular characters, we just need to escape them or precede those characters with the escape character. So in Bash, that character is going to be backslash, and in PowerShell, that's going to be back tick. So in our examples, the lines would look like echo, Bob says, backslash, quote, hi, backslash, quote, right? And in PowerShell, it's going to be the same thing, except instead of backslashes, we're going to use back ticks, right? So quotation marks aren't the only special characters that you might need to uh, escape. In Bash, you're going to find bang, quote, dollar, pound, amp, tick, so many others. The same thing with PowerShell. You're going to need to escape stuff like dollar, paren, star, plus, dot, pound. You know, uh, I'll link to places where you can find all of the nitty gritty about those. But here's a fun little trick that you can use to forego the entire situation, at least in PowerShell, and that is, you know, to use an encoded command. So get this, if we actually do PowerShell slash question mark, you'll notice that one of the parameters ex accepts is TAC encoded command, which states that it accepts a base64 encoded string version of a command, and it says, use this parameter to submit commands to Windows PowerShell that require complex quotation marks and curly braces, which is sort of Microsoft saying, hey, escaping is hard, so just encode it a different way. Now, if you're not familiar with Base64, it's just a simple way of representing any arbitrary binary data in an ASCII format. Assembly, uh, you get 64 simple printable characters, then you just choose them to represent stuff. So for example, A through Z, capital and lowercase, plus some numbers, two other characters, 64, boom, none of which need to be escaped. So I bring all of this up because on the Bash Bunny, our friend, the quack command that does all of the ducky-like keystroke injection is in fact a Bash command. And as such, it's actually going to interpret special characters just like Echo were to uh, and any other Bash command for that matter. So, you know, often we're using that quack command to actually inject some keystrokes into a Windows box that will be interpreted by PowerShell. So we actually have two layers of scaping to kind of wrap our minds around. And uh, since we just learned that PowerShell will accept Base64 encoded commands, which are made up of those characters you don't actually need to escape, then you might imagine that you could put those things together and just take the headache out of this stuff completely. So as an example, if we were to make like this totally nefarious payload here that creates a new directory called foobar and then does a directory listing, we could actually Base64 those and send them off to PowerShell TAC capital E, right? So it would echo and make directory, foobar, ls, and then we would pipe that to iconv tac t utf 16 le and then pipe that to base 64. and by piping to powershell that i c o n v it actually converts that over to utf 16 encoding which is what powershell is going to be expecting and then by piping that to base 64 well we get that simple plain text ascii that if we copy it back over onto our windows box powershell tac e that stuff Boom, there you go. We get the expected results. And the reason that I bring this up is because Posh Magic Code on the Hack5 forums has posted a Bash Bunny snippet or payload using Alcantara's work and basically this exact same thing, except to do this on the fly, which is really cool. There's a link in the description below, and I think it's fantastic. So with all of that, I'm gonna take a quick moment to thank our sponsor and then check in on our Hack5 gear giveaway. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online 
online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Now, I know last week we had a fun trip down memory lane talking about Windows 95 Explorer tricks, and we got into some really great comments on, on your favorite hacks, and I, I want to go into one of them in particular as it's actually an Easter egg in a Hack5 product. But until then, I would like to thank Posh Magic Code for posting uh, the Bash Bunny payload on the Hack5 forums. I'm going to be DMing you for a Hack5 $100 gift certificate for your next Wi-Fi pineapple or land turtle or any of the great Hack5 gear. And if you'd like to get one of your own, I encourage you to go ahead and comment on that link in the description over on the Hack5 forums. Until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. <laughs>